And God is good. Yes, yes. He is. And I do have three children. I do have a wife. We, I lose track, but we've been married uh, for how 32 years. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So God is good. Amen. We actually met in the church. Just to tell you a little bit about me, but we we met in the church. Uh, and we were young, saved believers, and one thing we knew, we both had a passion for God. And I'll tell you, uh, as I think about my experience, we can only rejoice in God when we think about how He finds us where we live. Yes, man. <laughs> you know, uh, many of you, we come from all different experiences, but the one thing that I'm striving for now is just to be transparent. To be real. Because as new believers, we come out of a place called the world. And if you know about the world, it's like, to me, like a, a, a cesspool, a mud pool. <laughs> I came out with a lot of mud and a lot of dirt. When I read the Bible and I see sinners saved, I was a sinner saved. Some people talk about that as believers, we have this idea of the faith message. And, and I came right into what's called the faith message. How many, when I say that, does, does anybody, does that mean something specific to anybody here? Raise your hand if I say the faith message. Yes. Well, what it is, there's, there's a group of believers, uh, and now some of them, you even start seeing in media, they've gone on to be with the Lord. The faith message, there's a guy named Kenneth Hagin, first Bible teacher. That I read everything he wrote. And then there's names that come before him that he picked up on teaching. But I'll even share this. Our first time walking into Life Church, some will remember I actually had the experience of being over there on Old St. Augustine Road before we moved here. And this, this is much nicer. This is a good move. And we came because I don't. We don't want to create labels and all this because that's what happens. If I start telling you about my experience, we, we automatically start putting labels. <laughs> but Pastor Steve went to the church. I mean, the the Bible school founded by Kenneth Hagin. So that's why we came. So that doesn't mean that that's who he is or that's what Pastor Steve teaches. And that doesn't necessarily mean who I am. So we, we want to be careful about the labels. But what I will say, you see, there's always been uh, teachings come into the church. One was the faith teachings. And that is an important teaching because it says you can believe God at His Word. Yes. That you can believe what He said and you can experience what He said. That the Bible is real. Now, today I do want to talk about something else that uh, has moved into the church. And that's a teaching on grace. There are ministries who uh, take on what you call a flavor. Who's, who's heard of uh, Joel Osteen? Yes. <laughs> All over TV. He's big on it. Uh, on grace. And the Bible is big on grace. But, what, but what's happened in his message? Some say, you, you can bring names like that where everybody, even people that just watch um, uh, TV know, know Joel Osteen. Uh, and some will say, uh, oh, his message, I don't like him. And others say, I love him. Well, what, what I want to talk about in my experience is what does the Bible say? <laughs> yes, because when it comes down to it, it doesn't bother me if somebody doesn't like Kenneth Hagin. Uh, there was criticism of the faith message. I don't know if you, as many of you have had experience in the church and you, there's different lines of teaching and people run those lines really hard and, and they stay re really uh, thick on, on those subjects. And then, uh, and so then they pick up criticism, because you can go and you can find heavy. Now we got the internet, you know. <laughs> I I read everything I can about um, a subject or a person because it doesn't bother me if if somebody says something bad about Tom. <laughs> 
<laughs> he, he, can, he can take a beating and keep on ticking. Amen. That's why I mentioned him. Uh, I love him. I stand with him. He, he, he doesn't have to be perfect. I want to read a scripture, and we're going to talk some about grace, but um, I've got two particularly I'd like to talk about. One is in uh, Philippians chapter 3, and it's the Apostle Paul. You know, he called himself the chief of sinners. So, somebody once said that there's sin in the house. Well, there is. I walked in. <laughs> there's all... <laughs> what, what it is, see, we all have been in this mud. I started by saying we've all been turned in this, this mud and swished up in this mud. And, and some people talk about, well, why do bad things happen to good people? This mud is circling on us. And, and I'm going to get to this idea. I'm trying to bring these ideas together of uh, these different teachers and, and where, where we get to where we are because we, we have to live where we are. And the, at the end of the day, we got to live where we are. We, we wake up with me. When I wake up, I'm there. When I go to bed, I'm there. <laughs> so in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, I'm going to throw out some scriptures. If you've read the New Testament, um, you'll be able to pick up on some of it faster. I'm not going to refer to everything um, by reference. But here we see, Paul says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Amen. Brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended or to obtain, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Yes. Going back to verse 12, it says, But I press on that I may lay hold of, of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Thank you, Lord. We're, we're talking in a way, I, I, can, I will talk in a way that some people will not comprehend it. They won't understand it. The world cannot understand what we talk about. The New Testament says that we talk in spiritual terms, so the world won't understand when we talk about spiritual things. What happened to me in my experience, the God of creation loves people. He loves relationship. He knows you individually. If I, if I name you by name, each one, if you know him, he showed up on your doorstep. He called you by name. Amen. It got personal. He came to you in your mess, in your mud. Yes. Amen. And he called you by name. This, this is personal. See, this is what he did to me. I was in sin. I was in death. I was in the mud. The mud was circling around me. 